Well, thanks for joining us again. Um, I heard a funny one lately, um, and okay, it's funny to me that which is not a promise that it's going to be funny to anybody else. But did you hear the one about the atheist, the priest, and the rabbit who walked into the bar? So an atheist, a priest, a rabbit walks into the bar, and a rabbit says to the atheist and priest, I think I'm a typo. Uh, recently began a series of messages on uh, questions about God, and the first question is, does God exist? There were a couple of points in that message that I didn't have a chance to answer, and so I, I want to be able to answer those, those questions. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, lead our thoughts. I pray this time would be useful and honoring, useful for, for us, honoring to you. Through Christ we pray. Amen. So we live in a world where there is um, there are a lot of people who are atheists. Increasingly, there are greater numbers of people who claim to be atheists. And certainly the influence of atheism is increasingly prevalent in our day. And so it's helpful for us to be able to know what we believe as well as to have reasonable conversations with people who are skeptical. Uh, if nothing else, I, it's important for us to be confident and, um, and to be able to have some tools for the conversations. Um, the series of questions that I offered were the, the, to discuss with somebody who doesn't believe there is a God or is questioning the existence of God is sim uh, started like this. Uh, the first question is, if there is not a God, how do you explain that anything exists? Why is there not just nothing? Why is there something instead of nothing? Atheists will say, relying perhaps on Aristotle, that, that well, matter is eternal. There's always been matter. Um, Richard Dawkins, actually, in his conversations, um, I've heard him say, no, we have these physical qualities, this gravity and other, you know, uh, physical laws. And, um, and because of that, things exist. We just don't know where those things came from. He freely exists. But, okay, so why do we have something instead of nothing? The second question then is, where does rationality come from? And why can you trust it? A quote that I didn't get a chance to share the other day was um, from Alvin uh, Plantiga, a leading American philosopher, who's pointed out the implications of believing in uh, a material world that has always been in that things are now because of eternal matter. If Darwin is right, he says, and we are the product of mindless, unguided natural processes, then he has given us strong reason to doubt the reliability of human cognitive faculties and therefore inevitably to doubt the validity of any belief that they produce, that, that they produce including Darwin's own science and his atheism. His biology and his belief in naturalism would therefore appear to be at war with each other in a conflict that has nothing to do with God. In other words, if we just come from a mindless evolution, the, the question becomes, so how did that which is physical create something non-physical? How did matter create thinking? Um, and if we made this clear the other day, um, the driving force of Darwinian evolution is survival, not the seeking of truth, and it certainly isn't love. And so if the driving force of why we can even think is essentially survival, not truth or love, why should we trust it? Atheist reductionism, he co co goes on, undermines the foundations of the very rationality needed to construct any argument of any kind whatsoever. The new atheists have sig sing signally failed to appreciate the catastrophic implications of their view for science, not to mention their ethics. 
And that leads us to the third question. What is a sufficient foundation then for ethics? You're talking to your friend about um, why God exists. Okay, if, if there is no God, what provides a foundation for ethical behavior? Now, again, I, I tried to make clear the other day, I'm not saying you can't be good without God. In fact, we shouldn't be surprised that people are good without God because Romans chapter 1 tells us that God has revealed to us his nature, what is good, what is loving. He's created us in his image. We have his, his, a sense of conscience which, which desires to, to be at peace with him. And Romans chapter 2 the Apostle Paul actually chastises the Jewish people because they didn't obey God, even though God gave them the revelation of the Old Testament. Even God gave them, explicitly gave him the law, them the law, which defines right and wrong. They didn't obey that, but he said when Gentiles who don't have the law do by nature what is written in the law, then they become a judge over you. So, Paul makes the point there that people who, and in fact, Old Testament has examples of people who followed God even though they didn't have God's um, um, uh, revelation through the law. So it's possible to be good without God. That shouldn't surprise us. But for the new atheist, they're very aggressive with, but you don't have to have God. It's not necessary. In fact, in fact, because of God, people do bad things. Christopher Hitchens says, you know, God is not good. How religion spoils everything, ruins everything. Which uh, John Lennox responded to him. I think it was John Lennox in a debate with him said, um, I may believe that Einstein's theory of relativity is good and Einstein is good, uh, despite the fact that people may take Einstein's theory of relativity and do things that would cause death, create bombs that would destroy. The fact that people do bad things with something provided is not a commentary on the thing provided or on the one who provides. It's not a, so you have to distinguish between Einstein and the person who, who uses what Einstein has given them. I thought that was a pretty good argument, but but uh, belief in God makes more sense, I believe, as a as a fundamental uh, as a, as a um, consistent foundation because for morality because atheism by its very nature undermines morality. Again, think of the quote of Richard Dawkins where he says the universe is at bottom. The universe at bottom has no design, no purpose. No evil and no good, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. DNA neither cares nor knows. DNA just is, and we dance to its music. Well, if the byproduct, if we're the byproduct of that, which is doesn't know good or evil, then what kind of foundation does that give us for knowing good and evil? If ultimate reality is amoral, that means morality is, der is derived from the non-moral. Behavior is determined, by the way, and is not a matter of morality. This is why I pointed out before, Sam Harris, the atheist, said free will is an illusion. He says we're all puppets, essentially, of our... Well, what, what Dawkins said there, we dance to the music of DNA. He argues that if you and I had the same chemical makeup of psychopaths, we would all be psychopaths as well. The other element I would use, is, uh, the other thing I would have you consider is find, um, find a, a nation established on atheism that has not produced ultimately death and evil. The French Revolution threw out, I mean, one of the first things that they did was they wanted, it was an atheistic revolution and the, followed by, um, you know, the, 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 the beheading of people, whether they were guilty or innocent. 
think about the Russian Revolution. Again, an atheist revolution based on Marxist, Marxism, Marx who believed that religion was the opiate of the people, and that led to all kinds of killing and death. More people don't realize that, that more people died, have died under communism than ever died, were killed under Hitler's Nazism. And that's not to say Nazism was, wasn't bad. It was awful, terrible. But commun- But it did even worse. Nazism is another example, ultimately, of practical atheism. You have the Chinese Revolution as well. Thoroughly committed to Marxism um, results in all kinds of death and immorality. Biblical Christianity says the foundation for our morality is that we have a moral God. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He leads us down paths of righteousness for his name sake. We derive morality from a moral God. History, by contrast with atheism, history actually proves the strength of the moral foundation of of Christianity, of biblical truth, over and over again. When we think, just think of how Christianity has tra- changed the world for the good. The idea of holidays is from Christianity. The first Hospitals were started by Christians living out their beliefs. Christianity gave us adoption and foster care. Christianity taught that all work is noble. It gave us what is now called the the Protestant work ethic. Christianity gave us a high view of sexuality and marriage. It was Jesus who taught people to honor women. It was Christianity that taught husbands to love their wives sacrificially as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. It was Christianity who brought the foundations for human rights. It's Christianity that brings freedom with form. Uh, where um, uh, Jesus said, if you know the truth, you know the truth is such free. The Bible also says that um, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But think of the chaos. Think of the, the bondage that's being created now with an atheistic view of life that says God is not the one who determines sexuality. God is not the one who determines gender. That's a social construct. It's a human, humans construct that because it, humanism, secularism. And look at all the trouble and pain that is just beginning to unravel. Christianity gave us the worth of children. Christianity gave us the value of education for all. Christianity produced the first university. Christianity, Christians were the leading voices in abolition, for abolition um, in Great Britain first and then later in the United States. Christianity gave us the foundation for modern science. And we haven't even yet mentioned the positive impact of Jesus Christ alone. H.G. Wells, British writer, atheist, said, I am an historian, I am not a believer. But I must confess as an historian that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. Jesus Christ is easily the most dominant figure in all history. Yale historian Kenneth Scott Latterett added, as the centuries passed, the evidence is accu- accumulating that measured by his effect on history, Jesus is the most influential life ever lived on this planet. That influence appears to be mounting. Can we be good without God? Yes, certainly. But the question is, about foundations and not just what works for a short time or what works in a little picture here or there, but what works over time, what works in societies long-term. I think it's interesting that um, in the late 1990s, Richard Dawkins was one atheist who was making arguments that um, religion is bad. But in a more recent interview with BBC, he called himself a cultural Christian. He came out and said he felt like the world is better off because of 
what Christianity has brought into the world. And he actually went on to say that there has to be some kind of, there's a good value to some religious things. And, and it would be a tragedy if another religion, for instance, like Islam, he said, were to take its place. As I've said before, history is God's track record for how his truth provides morality to make the world a better place. I would leave with this quote of Jorgen Habermas that I quoted in my message. Leading intellectual, German intellectual and atheist warned Europe that our education system, our legal system, our human rights are all derivative from Judeo-Christian tradition. And then he adds, to this day, we have no other source. Everything else is modern, is postmodern chatter. Fascinating observation from an atheist. Can people be good without God? God, yes. But without a God who is good, by his nature defines good and evil, love and what's not loving. What provides for us a sufficient foundation for morality. Heavenly Father, uh, we worship you. I thank you that we can be confident that you exist and that you are good. Help us to live as though your ways are good. Lord, we ask that you would lead us down right paths for your name's sake today. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Next time I'll share with you one more argument for the existence of God. Until then.